Hello everyone. Hope you are having a good day. It has been 10 years since oclacitinib was approved for the treatment of atopic dermatitis in dogs, but it just feels like yesterday. So I came across this article which is a compilation of all the studies done in the past 10 years on oclacitinib. I know that many of you are busy, so I made a summary of the key points of this article for you. The link for the entire article is in the description given below. Just a brief history, oclacitinib was first approved in 2013 for the treatment of atopic dermatitis in dogs and it is the only approved drug of its kind till date. There are many similar versions of oclacitinib available to treat various disease conditions in humans including atopy. This drug works by inhibiting Janus kinase enzyme which plays a key role in the production of many cytokines and interleukins. To understand how this drug works, you first need to understand how the immune system works in atopic dogs. If you look at this illustration closely, the damaged keratinocytes tend to produce cytokines that recruit T helper cells, mast cells and eosinophils into the skin, particularly T helper 2 lymphocytes. These cells in turn produce a lot of interleukins that mediate cutaneous inflammation and pruritus. By blocking the Janus kinase enzyme, oclacitinib reduces the turnover of these interleukins. Oclacitinib has 90% bioavailability even when consumed with food. It reaches peak plasma concentration within an hour and has a half-life of 4 to 6 hours. To take a look at this graph, the blue lines are the concentrations of oclacitinib needed to suppress the respective interleukins. On dosing oclacitinib at 0.6 mg per kilo twice daily, the plasma concentration of oclacitinib remains adequate to suppress all the interleukins up to 12 hours. When reduced to once in a day dose, it continues to suppress the interleukin 31 up to 24 hours and interleukin 31 is one of the main mediators of pruritus. Hence, after two weeks of twice daily administration, the dose can be tapered to once in a day. Many studies have been conducted to test the clinical efficacy of oclacitinib against conventional therapy. In a study where interleukin 31 was artificially injected to mimic atopy, oclacitinib reduced pruritus faster than steroids, usually within an hour, whereas dexamethasone took longer and prednisolone took the longest, almost up to a day. In another study with dogs having atopic dermatitis, one group received oclacitinib and the other group received cyclosporin. The group that received oclacitinib performed better in terms of pruritus on day 28. On day 56, no difference between the two groups in terms of pruritus was observed. However, the group that was on cyclosporin therapy had three times more side effects than oclacitinib group. Another study compared oclacitinib cyclosporin Lokivetmap, which is popularly known as Cytopoint, which is a monoclonal antibody against interleukin-31 and prednisolone. In this study, the groups receiving oclacitinib and the group receiving prednisolone performed well at 2 weeks, whereas the groups receiving oclacitinib and Lokivetmap performed better at 4 weeks. Takeaway here is the groups that was under treatment with oclacitinib consistently showed better pruritus relief at 2 and 4 weeks. Another unique study concluded that pet parents of atopic dogs whose dogs were on oclacitinib tend to have better sleep and had to go to the vet fewer times and their pet showed overall improvement in behavior. Adverse effects that were observed in studies conducted over the last 10 years included weight gain, secondary demodicosis, pyoderma, and otitis. Tumors like histiocytoma, papilloma, mast cell tumor, and other cutaneous tumors have been reported, but in a study involving 400 dogs, there were no statistically significant difference between groups receiving oclacitinib and the group that did not. Tend to show mild leukopenia, mostly mild neutropenia and rarely mild lymphopenia. No significant changes in biochemical parameters were seen. 
there have been rare reports of uti in dogs that were on oclocitinib on a long term however studies have failed to observe uti in dogs that were on oclocitinib for up to 280 days as a use of antibiotic in pets receiving oclocitinib compared to pulse therapy reason could be the consistent use of oclocitinib to reduce or manage mild inflammation that may go unnoticed or be ignored in pulse treatment protocols another study oclocitinib has also shown to delay the sensitization period in beagles that were introduced to novel allergens oclocitinib has been used off label in cats to treat atopy however feline seem to efficiently process the drug and hence need higher doses to manage pruritus they also have a very wide dose range as shown equines however have similar efficacy and doses as dogs There have been individual case reports where non-atopic diseases like ischemic dermatopathy, sub-epidermal blistering dermatosis, ear tip dermatosis that is unresolving with conventional treatment have responded to oclocitinib. A single dog with cutaneous lymphoma went into remission for 3 months when oclocitinib was administered. The review concludes that studies in the future have to focus on assessing the anti-inflammatory properties of oclocitinib. and its potential to resolve stenotic ear canals in otitis for which steroids are still the mainstay treatment any drug has effects on the very processes of life and homeostasis hence it must be studied and understood well before we guide our patients the last 10 years has certainly taught us a lot about oclocitinib and this article has compiled it in a concise manner thanks to all the vets who have contributed to this review I hope this video helped you to understand oclocitinib better. See you in another video soon.